a single player story driven Star Wars game that was successful. <laughs> Something that's easy to slap EA in the face, but I find this game an absolute blast anyway. It's a game that more focuses on its story and narrative more than it does its action, even though this action is competent and it's to a level that's at least on par with others even though at the beginning you only start off with basic attacks and the first level after the tutorial only goes so far and you only get basic combos so you can't even use lightning or your y button so you've only got xxxx to do really Just, uh, you know, continue to press the the same button like xxx and y y y and xx and y y y again you'll be sucked which is a big reason why people might just play the first couple of levels and stop rather and keep playing because that kind of is a huge fault and it's completely understandable but it's a shame that people do leave before it gets better i mean a star wars game is something that people remember the action for not so much the actual story although this is an action game so you do expect action one of the great things though is the different variety of enemies as you can see here there's flamethrower enemies and um you even get to fight rancors which i love rancors so i'm absolutely so thrilled that they have them but there's so many different alien races and robots and shit like that there's even like power-ups which is like classic games like you you see somewhere here i uh, get invincibility power up you know you, you get different things you can do and play around with with the mechanics like at some point i just throw a bunch of people into a disintegration force field like you saw in Star Wars Episode 1, which I know people don't like the prequels, but it is nice to have little throwbacks there. The narrative is very interesting, where it's the set between Episodes 3 and 4, which to me was like where most of the impact is. So if you're not doing something that's a direct relation to the movie, it's, it's the best spot to put something when you're trying to build your own narrative for Star Wars. And a lot of people complain just for like, well, it ruins the canon or whatever, but like that to me, it's just, that's just kind of pointless when it's trying to build its own narrative. As long as everything on its own, like just for the game, if you if you didn't see Star Wars, for instance, and you were just watching this and it, or sorry, playing this, then it's like yeah, it should stand on its own two feet and be entertaining. And certainly, the dialogue for it is pretty basic and it's quite rough, but the narrative itself is quite entertaining. It, it will give you some kits, you know. It's, it won't blow you away. Nothing here is impressive. It, EA is certainly not going to be making too many games with it since the, the last of the game. There's only been Lego Star Wars, Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, which, considering the years prior, is baffling because I love how we get games like this back in the day, the way it's like they're just so varied and different from other games that you've got. You know, like it, it, Star Wars, for instance, has like strategy games, racing games, flying sim, uh, action games like this, first person shooters, you know, it's, it's, it's got just about everything. Like there's so many different varieties and action games for me are one of my favorite genres, so of course I love this. Especially how it's set in the Star Wars thing, just being able to run around and explore a new, a new setting, a new theme where they try new ideas with a, a world that I've, I'm quite interested in with a new narrative which the, the narrative is the interesting thing but like the narrative essentially is just that vader wants to kill his master but there's a bit more to it and you're clearly just kind of caught in the middle of it because you're not playing as either and you're playing as that random guy that's just brought into it and used like a weapon or, or a tool essentially in that little battle between one another and that ultimately cultivates in the final climax where you're given one ultimate decision which is the one that after i played the wii version it just stuck with me and i kept wanting to play through it just to get to that decision because it's something that, that i left thinking about you know just kind of like after i watched one of the star wars movies i would always be left thinking about one scene or one moment where it's like what if this happened you know what are the implications you know where can it go from here and all these different things that would be flowing through my mind like that that's the stuff that i really liked about the narrative not, not trying to avoid spoilers there and i know it is kind of edge lordy to pick this sort of time period with this little guy who's like a tool it's like oh, i don't get the you know my feelings and, and all that sort of you know like 
you kill everyone, I'm a cool badass, and, you know, holds the lightsaber stupidly, which, honestly, the worst bit is holding the lightsaber stupidly, but when you hear, hear the character talk and all that, it doesn't seem too overly edgy, you know, like, you just back off of that a bit, like, you know, it's it's still quite interesting, the, the, you know, because the characters are quite bland in the... The, the actual dialogue between them isn't something that allows you to get invested, which is why people would say the narrative is bad. But the process of what is happening to the characters and the overarching story between the characters, you know, the um, the the character arc that they build for them is quite interesting, I think. It's quite an interesting dynamic, and it... It feels like it could have actually happened as well, even though it, it's clearly not canon. It feels like something that could have actually happened in the story between episodes three and four. Although I haven't played the DLCs yet, I'm, I can't wait to. And definitely the first level or so is the absolute drop down. The DLCs, however, um, they had some pretty nice outfits. Um, they they pretty fun to play with. One that's a little ghost boy that kind of seems a little buggy in places. There were plenty of nice little furry bags. Why wasn't that Bubba Fair? <laughs> little anime husbando. Husbando sounds fucking Mexican to me, like a, a Mexican word. But yeah, there's that. There's even that Kodo fucking character. I'm yet to play Kodo. I hear it's pretty good, so I'll probably check that out at some time. But yeah, this game certainly has its cons, and I can see why people don't like it. But if I were to recommend this or not to someone, I'd more often than not recommend it. Because it is a, a nice little fun game to play. It's just one that you shouldn't, you know, overhype or anything. A lot of people had the, always have the debate as well, which is like, what version of this game is the best? And to me, I only played the Wii version. I didn't play the Xbox 360 or PS3 or PS2 version because I heard it was on the PS2. So that probably wouldn't have been the worst. I only played the Wii version and now I've played the, the PC version. And the Wii version obviously had a lot of levels missing, like the second level and a lot of the levels didn't work how they did before. However, there was one thing that the Wii version had, which the others didn't, which is where just between each level, you would have your option to change out and customize your own lightsaber and all that in a cool little menu option between levels while you were sitting in the ship. And that to me was like the coolest thing in the Wii game, but the Wii version was shit. So even though the PC version is a little bit buggy and bad in some areas, I still find it to be a lot better. I don't know if it's as good as a PS4 version, but I'm willing to, sorry, the PS3 version, but I'm willing to say it's better than the PS2 version. Now there's a pretty meme, exquisite. 